Welcome to another Raspberry Pi video. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how you can completely revamp the default shell on your Raspberry Pi so you can do things like see color coded information on your shell, track your working directories dynamically as you change paths, be aware of active Git branches that you're working with, and see custom symbols for a much cleaner experience and potentially a lot more due to countless plugins that you can install on the new shell. So overall, these are some of the steps that we'll be following today. First, we'll need to ensure that Git is installed on your Raspberry Pi. Then we'll install ZSH along with the Oh My ZSH framework. And after that, we'll install two separate plugins that allow ZSH to do auto suggestions and syntax highlighting. And then finally, we'll get Powerline fonts installed so that fancy symbols can show up successfully on the shell without issues. So let's get started and open up an SSH session to connect your Raspberry Pi on the network. Run sudo apt update to get all the latest package information from what's already installed on your Raspberry Pi. And if you don't already have git installed, you'll want to run sudo apt install git. And if you already have it installed, feel free to skip running this. Now, if it asks whether you'd like to continue, simply type Y and then press enter. The reason we need Git is so that we can clone or fetch Git repositories for ZSH plugins. Now that Git is installed, we're going to install ZSH. Let's run the following command to start the installation process for the ZSH shell. Once again, type in Y followed by the enter key in case it asks you to continue. Now that ZSH is installed, we need to set it as the default shell on your Raspberry Pi. We can do this by running the following chsh command, which may ask you for your password. This is basically the standard password that you use to log into your Raspberry Pi. And after that, run the next command, which you can simply copy and paste from the video description under step number one. What this is going to do is clone and install the oh my ZSH package. Once this completes, let's run the exit command to close out of your SSH session and then restart the session again by logging into your Raspberry Pi. Since oh my ZSH is installed, you may have noticed that the UI now looks a bit different but we're not quite done yet. First, we'll run the following command to install the auto suggestions plugin. This command can be found in the video description for you to copy and paste from step number two. Next, we'll install another plugin to enable syntax highlighting. This command can also be found in the video description for your convenience as part of step number three. At this point, we've installed two plugins, but they're not being automatically loaded during startup. So let's fix this by running sudo nano to modify the .zhrc file. Navigate further down until you can see the line with plugins. You may find that git already exists here, but we need to add auto suggestions and syntax highlighting here as well. And by the way, don't forget the dashes here. One optional step if you're in the US is to remove the pound sign next to the export lang statement. This basically helps with localization sometimes, but it's not required if you wanted to ignore it. Since we're done making changes here, press Ctrl X followed by Y and then hit enter to save changes to the file. Let's exit and restart the shell once again so we can test out the changes. So if you start typing in a command you've used recently, you can see how it automatically tries to complete the rest of the command for you. You can also see how ZSH will now highlight command syntax for you. So we can visually see the difference between say the echo commands parameter versus a variable name. And now both of our plugins have been loaded successfully. We can now move on to the next part of this tutorial. Using this command, let's go ahead and install the Powerline fonts package on our Raspberry Pi. Just like before, if you see any prompts for whether you'd like to continue, hit Y and then press enter. For the next set of steps, we're going to switch to our PC. Start by opening a browser and then pointing it to the GitHub link provided in the video description under step number four. 
Let's download the file and then navigate to the path where the file was downloaded to. You can either right click the file and then click install or you can open the font and then click the install button from the window itself. This will install the Powerline font to our Windows machine. Now let's open PuTTY and then jump to Appearance under the Window category. Make sure you check the Allow Selection of Variable Pitch Fonts checkbox. After that, click Change under Font Settings and then type in Meslo to find the exact Powerline font that we've installed. You can leave the font style bold, but we'll want to increase the font size to 12. Click OK and then jump to Data under the Connection category. Now update the value of Terminal Type String to include Xterm 256 color. This should make the shell look a lot more vibrant. Now we need to save the session so you don't have to do this every time you SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Click on the Session category and then add your Raspberry Pi's host name. And then give it a name to identify the changes that we just made. Finally, you'll want to click the Save button. Going forward, you can simply load that session we just made to save you some time. And now let's try logging back into the Raspberry Pi. You'll notice that the font has changed successfully, but the symbols don't make much sense because we still need to update the ZSH theme. Let's run the sudo nano command again to make changes to the .zhrc file. Look for the line with ZSH underscore theme and then update it to use Agnoster. Save the file by pressing Ctrl X, followed by a Y, and then press Enter. And now close out of this session and launch a new one, and you will find that the symbols are now showing up correctly. All right, I promise we're almost done now since we're at the last step of this tutorial. Let's kill the Raspberry Pi session, jumping back to our PC. Point your browser to the GitHub link provided in the video description for step number five. Let's download this registry file and then jump to where it was downloaded on your PC. Right click the file and then open it with your preferred text editor. We need to update the session name to what we gave it earlier in PuTTY. In my case, this is our Pi, but yours may be different. Once you're done, save all changes to this file, close the text editor, and then let's run the updated registry file. After clicking yes to confirm, you should see a success message, in which case you want to click OK. At this point, we are all done, so let's test out all of our changes. First, we'll open up our SSH session, and as you can see, PuTTY is now solarized with the right colors. So now, as you start typing certain commands in, like CD, you'll start to see automatic suggestions kicking in as well. If you happen to jump to a directory, you will now get traceability information as well as any active git branches that may exist and last but not least if you typo something or run incorrect commands you will see relevant symbols showing up for those errors and this was something that we couldn't see before with the default shell for those of you that are concerned about what registry changes that we made in the last step i definitely want to take a moment to show you the exact change and for your convenience, I've provided a registry path in the video description for you to copy. If you run reg edit from the start menu and then point your registry editor to that path you copied, you'll find a directory with your session name. If you open that folder and scroll down, you'll find the same exact color values that we updated earlier. And for those of you that are interested in checking out more ZSH themes, I've provided a link in the video description for that as well. You'll find that Oh My ZSH supports a bunch of different themes that you can install yourself at any time. The one we applied in this tutorial is called Agnoster, and you'll find that you really can't go wrong with it. So in the next video for the Raspberry Pi series, I'll show you how to run your own Discord bot on your Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching, and for more on Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.